G'day guys, Solid here. Welcome back to another video. I'm just hiding out in the garage today and I thought I'd do a little update for you just on how I'm going with getting an off-road motorcycle. I've been getting a lot of questions so I thought I'd update you on that. How I'm going with the cruiser behind me and my new fitness machine as well. So let's jump straight into it. I know it's not a motorcycle, it doesn't have an engine in it, but it has spoke wheels, right? So that counts. So this is basically how I'm planning to keep fit moving into the off-road season. So I find this uses a lot of the same muscles, so it's really good for keeping in shape for the off-road riding. So for those of you looking for a way to keep bike fit, this is a good way of doing it and you're still on two wheels. So I grabbed this second hand, so I'm pretty happy with it. So that's the first little channel update and a tip if you're wanting to keep in shape for the off-road riding. So the second update is that we're moving out of this place in a year's time into our own house and hopefully I'll have my very own garage for the first time. But it does mean looking at the finances and trying to really tighten the belt. And one of the things I identified that I don't really need that will really help save some money along the way as long as give me a little bit of a piggy bank for just in case is the cruiser so the v-star does have to go now don't get me wrong i absolutely love this bike in the six months that i've owned it but it does have to go now hopefully i won't have to spend that money as it's going to sit as a rainy day fund just in case for when we're moving so once we've settled in i'll hopefully have a surprise for you in what's going to be going into the future it's definitely going to be off-road orientated this time rather than a road bike so in a year's time, hopefully I'll be able to exchange that into something new and shiny. But it's also there in case we do need that extra money for the deposit or we do need it for moving costs. So unfortunately it has to go. It has served me well, so it's up for sale. So I thought I'd update you on how I'm doing with the V-Star. One of the reasons I'm looking forward to moving out, of course, is having a crappy carport. Whilst it does serve the job and keeps the bike relatively dry, it's not weatherproof. And it's not really conducive to really having an awesome environment where you can really put all your tools and feel safe about having everything enclosed. Because as you can see, it's pretty open to the weather. All my stuff is, you know, out in the open. So I'm really looking forward to getting a garage. Alrighty guys, we're back in the computer room. This is where I do all my editing for the channel. It is the next day, that's why I'm in different clothes. But I wanted to talk you through the WR250R I'm strongly looking at. I've been to see it a couple of times now and had a thorough looking over of it and it looks fairly promising and the only thing that's holding me back is my mate is going to be selling me this and he's still on holidays. He should be back in a week's time and after that all that needs to be worked out is an agreed upon price and a mechanical inspection. Should those two things work out it shouldn't be too much longer fingers crossed but I did want to walk you through it show off the mods that it has, where I'm thinking of taking this and why I've decided on this particular thing. You guys have been fantastic. I've had a few guys offer me their very own bikes that they're thinking of selling. I really did want to thank those guys that did reach out. I'm very flattered that you thought of me when you were ready to sell. Unfortunately, they just weren't quite what I wanted and I wanted to go over this bike with you. So without further ado, I'll show you this bike. Now, some of you would have seen this already if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook. So you can see it's a well-used 2012 with 12,000 Ks on the clock. So that means it's been ridden regularly. So it hasn't been sitting gathering dust in the corner, which is what I like to see. It does have gravel rash and you can see the good old WA red dust everywhere. But that means I don't have to feel so bad about dropping it. And let's face it, with my level of incompetence, that's gonna happen as that's pretty much my speciality at this point. So that's one of the reasons that this bike appeals to me. I don't have to feel bad about ruining it as it's already been well used. You can see it's got uh, quite a few of the choice mods for a WR250R, but it's also got quite a few modifications that I've never had on my 250R or have not ridden any of my mate's bikes with these items. So I'm really excited to try these out as these are mods that I really would like to try, but they were too expensive for me to justify purchasing just to see how they would turn out. And I didn't want to risk them not being things I would like for the amount of money that they would cost. 
So that's why I'm also excited about this bike. So I'll go through the mods. You can see it's got the general crash protection. It's got a radiator guard as well. Uh, things that I like as a safari tank. I've had one of those before. Very reliable in my experience. And it also means I can go straight out into the trails and have fun without getting fuel anxiety. As most of my day rides tend to be over 300 kilometers. So the stock tank just isn't up for that. I will probably chuck an IMS on this at some point because the safari isn't big enough for the big adventure trips in my opinion and in my experience. A great thing I'm looking forward to having here is the screens for bike screen on the highway. I'm really interested in seeing how that will uh, go on the highway speeds, saving my chest from the buffeting wind. So that'll be good to see. One thing I'm not too uh, fussed about is the FMF pipe. I know a lot of you guys like this and you always talk about your gains in power. I'm not really after uh, peak horsepower gains in a dual sport. I'm much more interested in increasing mid-range torque and reliability of the motor. So I'm not convinced that this does anything really, but that's another discussion. I would much prefer having the stock um, extractors or exhaust pipe with a GYTR muffler. That way I can have the stock heat guards here down near the legs and on the exhaust uh, muffler here to stop my bags from melting. But it is what it is, so I'm just going to take this, see how it goes, and probably get uh, one of those giant loop exhaust protectors somewhere along the line. Another couple of things that it has that I'm interested to try out are the Stegs pegs here. I've ridden on these before on a 450F. And I loved it in the sand. It was great for uh, maneuverability in the sand, but I did feel trapped on the bike in every other scenario. So I'll be interested to try this out long term and I can always take them off if I don't like it. The other interesting thing it has is pivot pegs. So they're very expensive. I've never had them because of that. So pivot pegs allow you to pivot 20 or so degrees forwards and backwards, obviously to allow you better uh, action with the gear lever and brake lever and they argue better stability on the bike. We'll see about that. Another thing that I can move on for a profit if I don't like them. Here you can see the radiator guard still in pretty good nick. Doesn't look like it's too warped. He's even taken the time to cover the sharp edges here like I did which is good to see. Uh, the other thing I love about this bike is the Skaggs uh, wide billet rack. I had this system on my bike very very strong yet very very light uh, i can chuck my box on the back there and i can pretty much never worry about breaking indicators and it's a place for my tools my gloves and just small items when i'm traveling day to day doing my little shopping runs on the motorcycle the other thing that will be great for riding in traffic on the street are the double take mirrors as you know i had the highway dirt bike handguards which were great off-road because i had mirrors you could just fold on the insides of the handguards. But what I never said is how crap they were in traffic. So I split traffic a lot, I go down the middle. And one of the pains of the mirrors is they stick out from the handguard. So it made my bike even wider and it was quite hard. So I'd have to fold them in every time I get to traffic, which was a pain. So looking forward to having these where I don't have to fiddle with them to go through traffic. This has Bark Busters on it as well, which is an Aussie company, which I'm very happy about. Uh, it will be fun to just to try a different uh, handguard manufacturer out. I did have some problems with the Highway Dirt Bike handguards. When I dropped it, it would nudge my banjo bolt on the master cylinder. And a couple of times I lost all front brakes because of air bubbles and I crashed into a tree. So that was a bit of a concern. Looking forward to not having that problem as it was always a bit of a worry. Let's move on to the controls. Uh, Pro Taper handlebars, same as I had on my bike, but they're a shorter variety, but he has got risers, so that's great because I am a little bit taller than average. Heated grips, that's a bit of a luxury that I'm looking forward to having. Not sure if I'll keep it, but I'll see how I go in the very cold mornings. And the same charging system that I had on my old bike, which is waterproof and dustproof, and in my experience, bombproof. So. Happy to see that there. That's about it for mods. You can also see that he's messed with the plastics drilling holes here, probably for a fender bracket for a fender bag. That leads me to what I'm going to be doing with this bike. So 
I will probably take this bike in a little bit different of a direction to my other bike. My other bike was purely set up for the adventure riding and enduro riding as a second thought. This time around, I'm probably going to bite the bullet and go all out on suspension and get a decent suspension tuning so that it really handles in the rocky stuff and in the whoops much, much better. And in the medium term, not initially, but uh, somewhere in the future, I'm thinking of a big bore kit just to give it that little bit extra torque as I think that's the only real problem with the WR in my eyes other than uh, rear suspension work is that it just lacks a little bit of torque for some of the riding I do. So I think with those two things, it will be my perfect unicorn, at least until I get to a point where I am really starting to push it with enduro riding. And my plan is somewhere in the future to actually add an enduro bike to the stable and keep this as my adventure bike. So that's where I'm heading with this as an adventure slash temporary enduro bike. And I'm really looking forward to changing up the plastics, maybe going with some colors that you don't often see. But that's basically where I'm going with this bike. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Have I lost my mind? Should I have gone new? Uh, it will be sad to see the V-Star go as it really has grown on me over the six months I've had it. Such a reliable bike. It really is a Jackal and Hyde bike. You really can bumble along and just be a grandpa. But then it is a big V-Twin. It's ballsy and loud enough that when you want to be a bit of a twat on the road, it's certainly happy to oblige. So. I will be sad to see it go, but hopefully I'll be able to maintain that kitty there. I won't need it for the expenditure of moving, and I'll be able to look at a more off-road oriented motorcycle somewhere in the mid-turn next year. So that's exciting. I'm looking forward to getting fit on that bicycle, and most of all, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on this WR250R and getting out onto the trails with the guys, which I'm sure you're also looking forward to. So that's it from me for this time, guys. I hope you like this little update, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later, guys.